Good morning. Good morning. Please stand and let's sing together our first hymn, hymn 390, hymn 390. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. O Lord, you have taught us that without love, whatever we do is worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts your greatest gift, which is love, the true bond of peace and of all virtue, without which whoever lives is accounted dead before you. Grant this for the sake of your only Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated to hear the word of God. A reading from Genesis. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in this land for two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is printed in your bulletin. Please join me in reading responsibly by half verse. Do not fret yourself because of evildoers. For they shall soon wither like the grass. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Take delight in the Lord. Commit your way to the Lord and put your trust in him. He will make your righteousness as clear as the light. Be still before the Lord. Do not fret yourself over the ones who prospers. Refrain from anger. Leave rage alone. For evildoers shall be cut off. In a little while, the wicked shall be no more. But the lowly shall possess the land. But the deliverance of the righteous comes from the Lord. The Lord will help them and rescue them. reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? What kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. 
And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as it is chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable, what is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a physical body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there's a spiritual body, if there's a physical body, there's also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it's not the spiritual that is first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As for the men of dust, so are those who are of the dust. As is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. The word of the Lord. to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold 
even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you. I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, loving your enemy has always been a radical concept. And I think there is no other, uh, no other uh, better example of that than what we have in Genesis this morning. Here we find Joseph being reunited and his relationships being restored with his brothers. But this came after a great deal of betrayal and hurt. You see, these were the same brothers who many years prior had sold him into slavery, thinking they were done with him forever. During that time of separation, Joseph experienced many highs and oh, so many lows. He had been brought to Egypt and sold to a high official, one in which he won tremendous favor. He worked diligently for him. That was until he was falsely accused of raping the official's wife. And with that, he was sent to prison. Now, while in prison, Joseph had gained quite a reputation for interpreting dreams. After two years of incarceration, he was brought before Pharaoh and asked to interpret Pharaoh's dreams. Now, because Joseph had wisdom and true discernment, all of which were given to him by God, he was unexpectedly freed from prison. And, and to go even further, he was given the second highest office in all of Egypt, right under Pharaoh. And then for seven years, he head up this great public works project, one where they would take a portion of each year's harvest and store it. So when the seven-year famine came, Egypt was well prepared. So life was good. And then that day came, that day when his brothers came to Egypt in search of grain. They didn't recognize him, but oh, Joseph knew who they were immediately. 
I mean, can you just imagine it? The whirlwind of emotions that he must have experienced? What would he do now? Now that he was in control, now that he had power, would he seek revenge? Well, what he did do was he made their lives a little chaotic and a little challenging for a while, playing some mind games with them, which left them confused and a little terrified. But here they were. They were now in his mercy. And that's where we pick up the story this morning. So after all that hurt, did Joseph show love towards his enemies? Yeah, he did. And it was amazing. The brothers, like I said, didn't recognize him at first, but when they did, and then realizing he didn't intend any harm to them, well, they were just stunned. They didn't know what to do. (laughs) They couldn't believe it. So Joseph called them close to him. He kissed them. He wept over them. Their thoughts and fears, these brothers who were terrified of that revenge was going to be sought, but all that disappeared. And this family that had been torn apart while it had been restored with great joy. Love your enemies. That's what Jesus tells us. Do good to those who hate you. These are radical words, particularly now, but they were radical words back then as well. I think we all have seen tremendous hate and discourse around us. This is why we need to listen carefully to these words of Christ. But then we may ask ourselves, how can a sensible person love someone who hurts them? How how can we love someone who gossips about us, who, who, who cheats us, who uses us, who coldly dismisses us? How can we love an enemy when everything we feel inside about that person makes us want to hurt them just as they had hurt us? Yes, we may be able to talk about love once the playing field is level. Yes, we may talk about love when the scale of justice have been balanced again. But to love your enemy before revenge? To love someone without any thought of getting even? Well, that's a whole lot to ask of anyone. But my friends, that is exactly what Jesus is asking us this morning. And he asks this for the simple reason, is that revenge, my friends, never, never works. The scales of justice can never be exactly balanced. As Martin Luther King Jr. said, when the people were calling for him to seek revenge after the burning of his home, what he said is, if you live by the rule, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, all you end up with is a nation of blind and toothless people. So today, Jesus is telling us to love our enemies, to do good to those who hate us. But how in the world do we do that? How do you love someone for whom you feel no love? Well, before doing the countercultural or the counterintuitive act of loving an enemy, well, my friends, we have to do something that is countercultural, else that is countercultural. You see, you have to recognize that love has very little to do with feelings. Our culture is one that believes everything is based on feelings. But that is a lie. Love does not depend on how we feel. You see, feelings are completely unreliable when it comes to evaluating or acting on love. 
For those of you who are married, can you honestly, now come on, can you honestly tell me you always like your spouse? Can you tell me honestly that you always feel good about him or her? Can you tell me honestly you always want to be close to your spouse? Or how about this, those of you who have siblings? Do you always feel great about them and never feel annoyed? Of course not. Of course not. So when we truly stop and think about this, we know that our love cannot be based on our feelings. Our commitment, a commitment rooted in and shaped by love, cannot depend on how we feel at any given moment. Love must be based on something else. It must be measured by something more substantial, and that something is action. Love is known in action. And Jesus makes that perfectly clear. He tells us what love does. Love blesses rather than curses. It is merciful as God is merciful. It forgives as God forgives, without any expectations of a reward or vengeance. And then Jesus says, do to others as you would have them do to you. This is the great rule of love, the great rule by which you can tell if you are loving someone even when you don't feel like it. So how can we love someone who we think is unlovable? We first must re resist the temptation of our culture and stop believing its lie, that love is only a feeling. Like I say, love feelings are unreliable. The proof of our love is known in the way we behave toward one another. Do to others what you would have them do to you, Jesus says. And that, my friends, is the great rule of love. It is a rule that begins with do. The spiritual promises that come with obedience to the rule is this. The judgment you give is the judgment you will receive. What you sow, you will reap. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be given to you. It is a promise, my friends, rooted in relationships. We don't forgive because we're all that altruistic. We don't bless because we're such great people. We forgive because we know we need forgiveness. We bless because we know we need blessings. We show mercy because we know we would be lost unless the abundant mercy had been, if it had not been shown to us. We do to others as we want them to do to us because there is no other way, my friends, to break the cycle of evil. Love is the only act that can overcome hate. Blessing is the only act that can overcome cursing. Forgiveness is the only act that can ultimately right a wrong. Joseph seemed to know this so long ago. He forgave, he blessed, he loved. But Genesis would not have us hold Joseph up as a hero. What this story tells us is that God had been at work in all that had happened, from the first betrayal of Joseph to the healing of his family's relationship. My friends, God is the one who was acting, and jo Joseph is the one who was obedient. And in his behavior, Joseph responds as God does. 
where he was rejected by his people, he was treated and suffered unjustly, and nevertheless, God forgave, God blessed, God loved. When we obey, when we trust God to have his way with us, we become signs of the kingdom because we are kingdom people. We become Christ-like. And sometimes it feels good. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes loving, forgiving, and blessing, well, it can hurt. But there is no other way. No other way. And so, we love, not because we want to do others a favor. We love because we have been loved. We love because we have been transformed. Amen. Please stand as you are able. Let us affirm our faith, saying the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God. Together in the prayers of the people, please kneel as you are able. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our bishop, and for all clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, for all in the authority, let us pray to the Lord. For this nation and our people, and for all the people of the world, especially those uh, in the Ukraine, let us pray to the Lord. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those on our parish list, especially Vicki, Sarah, 
Elizabeth, Carolyn and John, Donna, Cecile, the Annis family, Kara and Brooks and their baby due in June, Nancy, the Williamson family, Susan, Roger, Judy, Sherry, Don, the Allen family, Laura and Chris and their baby due in August, the Travelly family, Amy, the Mixon family, and Kitty. Let us pray to the Lord. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all who departed, let us pray to the Lord. For all the blessings of this life, for our creation, preservation, and our salvation, through your Son, Jesus Christ, we give thanks to you, O Lord. In the communion of all the saints, we commend ourselves and one another and all our life to you, O Lord our God. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. St. Peter and St. Paul. It's good to have you here, especially those of you who are worshiping with us for the first time, or those of you who are worshiping for, with us for the first time in a long time. It's good to have you here. Our mission is growing disciples of Jesus Christ, and we pursue this mission in many different ways. We are uh, coming up on the season of Lent, uh, the uh, 40 days uh, plus the Sundays before uh, Easter, and in our Lent in preparation, that begins on Wednesday the 2nd of March. And uh, before we start Lent, we get together and have pancakes for dinner on the Shrove Tuesday Pancake Supper. And that's Tuesday, March 1st. That's a week from this Tuesday. And I hope that you can join us uh, starting around 5.30 uh, and a little bit thereafter. On Ash Wednesday, the 2nd of March, we'll, we will have services with the imposition of ashes here at 7 a.m. noon and 7.30 p.m. Uh, we also have a conference for women uh, that is what's well, called the IF conference, and it's uh, being held at locations all around the world, including here at St. Peter and St. Paul. It's being streamed in uh, here at St. Peter and St. Paul, and that's Friday night, the 4th, and Saturday, the 5th. And if you'd like to learn more about this, uh, there's a little bit of information in your bulletin or on our website, and uh, please do register ahead so that we can be prepared to receive you. Do we have any uh, birthdays or anniversaries to celebrate this week? 
If so, come forward and we'll pray for you. Hi there. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on these your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. Now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father. of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Thank you.